Hi guys, in this tutorial, we'll be learning how to implement the final state machine in VSTL using model sim. So, before uh, uh, knowing how to implement the final state machine in uh, VSTL, I would request you to study this article so that you will get to know the basics of uh, FSM and how it works. So let me just give a brief introduction about FSM. So this is not this is an FSM diagram, like this is a state diagram. FSM stands for finite state machine. So as the name itself suggests, it's nothing but it has a finite state. So all these green circles are the states. So A, B, C, and D are the states. And this arrow pointing towards A is nothing but this arrow represents the initial state. So an, an initial value for the, fin, uh, for the finite state machine. So when a particular input is given, it changes its state. Um, so for example, it may change from A to B or it may change from B to D, it may change from D to C or it may change from D to A. But hold all this uh, state uh, transition depends upon the rules that we give. Say for example, if the present state is A and if your input is given, input given is 1, always remember that in order to determine the next state for a finite state machine, we have to look the arrows pointing outwards of the present state. So for example, now our present state is A. If our input say some input is given, we have to calculate the uh, next state. So if uh, my present state is A, look the arrows which are pointing away from A. So there are two options according to A that points away from A. One is A to B which is nothing but uh, from A to B and other is A to C. So these are the op uh, two arrows that are pointing away from A. So say for always remember that uh, the value to the left of the uh, slash is called as the input and value to the right is called as the input. So like the, though this is the left side is the input and right side is the input. Um, now we say that if my present state is A, for example, I am saying my present state is A, I am giving an input 1. So look for the arrows that have the input 1. Okay, uh, let's see, like compare, like compare those two uh, possible combinations. Here the input is 0, so we can't choose this. So here input is 1, so this is the point where it goes to trans uh, uh, transit. So when the present state is A and the input is 1, it transfers from A to B with the output 0. So now the present state is updated from A to B. So now my current state is B. Okay. Say now if my current state is B and the input given is 1, it again comes to B. It's the same but with the output as 1. Say my again current state is B and if I give an input 0, I think this is the input is uh, 0 and the output is 0, then it transfers from B to D. This D has a double circle. Any double circle in an FSM machine states that it is the final state. As earlier said, if this arrow indicates the initial value of a final state machine, this double circle means this is the last value of a final state machine, which means this is the last avail uh, available state in that machine, in that uh, FSM machine. Now, if uh, my say, I'll give another example, if my current state is D and my input is 0, so we have two possible combinations for D, either it's this arrow or this, this arrow. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, my input is 0, so I think this, this 0 is our, this arrow corresponds to our, to the input 0. So it will transfer from D to A with the input 1. So this is how FSM uh, machine works and the present state table for which uh, we, uh, we can identify from which present state input, next state and output. So this uh, table is the rule which helps in to determine the next state from one other state to another state. This FSM is also will have a clock, clock uh, signal and also will have a reset. So when the reset is active, say when reset is 1, 
the fsm will be resetted reset and will the current state value will be initialized to a so whatever may be the state if the reset is active it will go back to the initial value which is a so this arrow indicates that the a is the initial value say suppose if this arrow was near b then b is the initial value of an fsm so before knowing how to implement this uh, in a vstl programming i would request you to uh, learn this article so that we'll get an a basic idea of what fsm is what are how do they work how the transaction how the transition works and all those things okay now let's move on to uh, vstl coding as i said um, we have a reset button i am just declaring my entire library and i am declaring my entity and i am declaring the reset button a reset signal input output and clock so these are my main contribution signals next coming to the architecture we have to uh, define a signal with th these values so say type state available so these are the state available a b c d so type so type is nothing but an enumerated value a data type in vsl programming uh, which means we can list the uh, values that it can hold so this state variable i can all can have only these values a b c and d nothing more than that so if it it is user defined we can add more uh, more uh, states if we want and it's up to our wish so i am defining a b c d as my state available as the type so we have to map this values to a particular signal so we have two uh, aspects as of now we have the present state and the next state so both this present state and the next state can only be either b a or b or c or d so i am mapping this present states i am declaring signal present state next state along with state available so state available is nothing but this type variable so a b and c d gets mapped to this present and next state signal okay now up to this the architecture uh, initial uh, part of this segment is over next coming to this we have to define whether like uh, predict uh, like you know assign whether the reset by reset has been activated so in order to do that we process uh, clock and reset for that purpose if reset is one then the present state is a which means the default state it's an initial value if not the present state will be get updated to the next state so this is a simple uh, if else conditions for to check the reset condition next is we have to change the state depending upon the input and the present state because our transition table that we saw here depends upon the present state and the input state so we process the present state and the input state and we use the case statement so when case present state is when the present state is a and we give the conditions if the input is zero then the output is one and the next state is c else that is other condition where uh, input may be one so for that we use else output is zero next state is b that's what we have defined uh, defined here for present state a if input is one next state is b for uh, present state a and input zero next state is c so that's what we have given here so these all these are nothing but the design uh, rule, transition rule for the fsm uh, so this is how you do a vsl programming just be careful that you mention all these uh, variables properly and you define them properly because this will play a major role for the simulation process so let's see how to simulate it go to start simulation after compiling go to start simulation go to click work choose your entity my entity i given as fsm click and wave so you will get all these waves so for example first i'm not resetting my value uh, it's my uh, it's a default option so i'm not resetting my state values uh, go to input uh, say you're going to give an one okay for clock you can just right click it uh, go to click clock and just click okay now you see always see that the initial value present state and next state is y, is a because we have initialized that the default value should be a so that's why we can see that that is an 
a by default before simulating so just click run okay now have a look at this the present state is a and the input is one so it goes to state b just verify this to this diagram the present state is a input is one it goes to state b that's what we can see here right i didn't give any value for a reset please note this there's a red red uh, red line over here which means that it has, it has not not been activated yet okay now my next state is b which means the present state is b click uh, run once again now you can see that the present the next state is here b and the present state is updated to b okay now move this cursor now the present state is b and input as 1 let's see the next state is as b so when present state is b and input is 1 what will be the next state when the present state is b input is 1 the next state is same is nothing but the b so that's why there's no change here because b is the next state when the input is b okay now let's change this input to zero okay now you see that the present state is b input is zero when the present state is b and the input is zero the next state is d go to the fsm diagram the present state is b the input is zero the next state is d so that's why we can see here okay now, now let's see i want to reset my fsm so i'm giving an reset option value as one okay say so i'm giving it as reset value as one you can see that now even though the next state was b from b during the last clock cycle d has not been reflected during the next clock cycle because it has been reset to reset value has been set to one so that it has been uh, transistor from d to a because a is our uh, initial value when the reset has been sent so that's why here if you can see that b if it is here b it's here b if it is d actually for the next cycle it should be haven't been d because we have resetted the fsm machine it got updated to a so now let's check, check once again if the present state is a and the input is zero okay present state is a input is zero then it moves to c yeah that's what we see here the present state is the next state is c so this is how you uh, implement a final state mission in vsdl uh, just read so just read through this article so that you'll be able to implement the fsm in vsdl thank you